Hi 106, this is the video for week 12. During week 12, we are working on unit 11. The new material in unit 11 is adding a 5-7 chord into our repertoire for harmonization and transposition, as well as using it to help us with our repertoire pieces. So the 5-7 chord, what's gonna happen is, we've been playing a five chord. I have an example in C here. Here's my one chord in C. And we've been playing our five chord in root position. We started to experiment a little bit with putting it in an inversion. But now we're gonna be asked to do a five seven. So if we've got that Arabic seven there, they're asking us to add an extra tone to that five chord. They're asking us to make it a four note chord. They want that extra note to be an interval of seven from the bottom. So that's gonna take me up to F. So there's my five seven chord. By seven chords in in our neck of the woods became very popular with the advent of jazz when you're talking about the 20th century. And so most of the time we're more used to actually hearing this five seven chord than a five. This is gonna be very awkward to play, first because it has four notes, but secondly, because I would have to be moving so far, whether I'm going down or whether I'm going up. So we're gonna put this in an inversion. Remember, inversion means that we're changing the order of the notes, not the letter names. Changing the letter names would change the quality or the type of chord that I've got. So we're just changing the order. So the most common way to play a 5-7 is to put that third on the bottom, to put that added seventh in the middle, and to take our root and put it up on the top and we're just gonna drop that fifth out. We don't need the fifth, it's not as important as the third, which gives us the major or minor quality, and it's not as important as the seventh, which we're being asked to add to that chord. So this is the most common way to play that. The inversion would be identified as a five, six, five, just like we've talked about our inversions before with six being first inversion, six, four being second inversion, that six, five is referring to it's an interval of five from the root to the middle and it's an interval of six at the top. When we are playing, especially repertoire, this second or neighbors on the top is very identifiable and helps you to recognize a 5-7 chord much faster than reading letter names or even perhaps doing harmonic analysis. So the first thing that I'd like you to take a look at is on page 149, down here at the bottom, they've got showing you a one chord to that closest inversion of a 5-6-5. Five, five. So if I'm sitting in the key of C, to go to my 565, the easiest way I think, even easier than thinking your pitch names, is to think about the movement. From a one chord, thumb stays, finger two plays, fifth finger drops down half a step. It's really important to remember this is half a step. That's going to guarantee you're going to be correct in your key signature. So I would take this through all the white keys, build your pentachord, one, five, seven, stay play, drop half a step to see how that ensures that I've got that C sharp from that key. So that would be my first step that I would do. Of course, go back to your black keys as well. Then add it into your practice. You've got group one, two, and three scales. You can get that 5-7 in your right hand by following that same movement. Top stays, fourth scale degree plays, bottom down half a step. Most people find this fingering to be the most comfortable, but there is no right or wrong for fingering if you feel that that fourth finger, especially on your right hand, is weak. So looking through 148, 149, there's a good review of how you spell a five chord. There's an idea or a review of how to put a five chord in an inversion. That's something we've talked about in class before. And then they're introducing, if you are asked for a five seven, how to put that in an inversion that's usually the most comfortable. When we get into harmonization, make sure that you're watching whether you're being asked for a five or a five seven because there is a different way to spell them. 
As you work through the chapter, they, just like we did here, suggest taking it through some different keys. I would suggest going chromatically. Here they give you if you want to use their ideas for some different exercises. On page 151, there's a repertoire piece that I would encourage that you look at. It's got a really fun right hand with lots of great articulations, staccatos, and accents. What I really want you to concentrate on with this piece, though, is time-saving reading with that left hand. There should be absolutely no reason that you have to read a single letter name in here. By just looking at the shape of the chords, you should be able to see one, one, the written third of a four chord, five, seven, I'm identifying by the neighbors on the top, five, seven, but notice that they've put the fifth in there instead of the third, one, one, one much faster than reading letter names. This is a piece that we'll do some playing with in your class period. When you turn the page, you've got some nice sight reading examples that we found in every unit. The Allegretto, the dance, and numbers three and four, taking you through different keys. And again, notice if you've got fives or five sevens, use that to help you read. Notice your clef. They're trying to make you think about register, especially here on the first two of 152. When you're playing 152, we'll look at this one in class, both for register and for be careful when you come to that five chord, noticing if it's a five or a five seven. So these are four great sight reading examples. The book uh, suggests a key to transpose to. I would not only transpose to that key, I would go to every one of our keys, of our nine keys that we're doing scales in and use it in conjunction. Look at your example, play your scale and arpeggio on that key, work on the example. Pick your key to transpose it to, do your scale and arpeggio in that key. That's a great way to work and to cover more territory than doing all your technique at once or all your scales at once. That brings us to your assignment. Your graded assignment for this week is your choice of one of these four harmonizations that you've got on page 154 and 155. So you're given free reign. There are no chords anywhere in here. So they've given you blanks. So go ahead and write your chords in. You can see I've started doing Du, Du, Leaks, Mir, Im Herzen. My only request is make sure that you have at least one five by seven chord in each of these examples. I would like you to Pick your example that you want to play. Please do it in the key that it's written in and do it to the key that it's being transposed to. Notice that you also are being given suggestions for how the left-hand accompaniment should be. These are all two-handed, excuse me, they're all one-handed. Melody in the right, chords in the left. But do follow broken bass, blocked, 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 need two per measure because of your time signature. So five, seven chords, lots of fun. They'll add some great harmony to your harmonizations and to your transpositions. So I look forward to hearing your work.